How's it going everybody? We've got some YouTube content on the channel today. It's a bit different. We're doing this live over on Twitch, by the way. Link in description as always. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Get it out there, get it known. Expand the community. But today, we're going to be doing something a little different on the channel. We're going to be doing the Euro 2020-21, if you're really, really specific, predictions. I'm just pulling something up on my computer. Okay, so we're going to look at the groups. We'll start with Group A. Now, this is not based on anything. This is just based on form and what I believe. I don't watch much football, though, so soccer, whatever you call it. So this is going to be very different to what you normally see. But I'm going to say Group A, we're going to have Italy in spot one. We're going to go for... We're going to go for a little bit of an underdog story. We're going to have Turkey in spot two. We're going to put Switzerland in spot three. Now... And then Wales in spot four. Obviously, it's nothing personal against Wales. It's just that Turkey uh, have made quite a few upsets. And they've actually got quite a decent team. They've got Yilmaz. They've got a couple of other lads. And, well, Switzerland are pretty consistent as well. I reckon second and third will be... Maybe you switch them around. But ideally, Switzerland in two and three. Maybe one of them gets out. Who knows? Then we've got this group, Group B. Now, automatically, you've got the golden generation of Belgian talent. The question on everyone's minds, will KDB make it to match day one after that incident with Rudiger in the Champions League final? Again, we don't know. And again, it's a bit of a toss-up, but based on overall team quality, I'm picking Denmark, who put, a, put up a good performance in qualification from what I understand. I might pull up the qualifications. Why not Wales? I'm going. Oh. So here yeah, we've got the we've got the qualifiers, Euro 2020 qualifier. But Belgium and Denmark, and then we're going to put Russia in third. Again, it's probably a bit of a toss-up, realistically. But it's all about... It's all about that last game, and then Finland in last, just because. Then this one is not the most even. Like, again, we're going to... I mean... We'll put the Netherlands number one, right? Netherlands number one. Netherlands have just got the best side out of the group. So, they should get the job done. And then there's a bit of a toss-up. Like, Austria, Ukraine, North Macedonia. I think North Macedonia, despite their bit of a run in the groups, like, who did they come up against in qualification? They came up against Poland, Austria, Slovenia, Israel, and Latvia. So let's be honest. I feel like Austria will take second. I feel like Ukraine will take third. But a lot of these are mix to match. I'll, you might disagree. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. What do you think will happen overall? Then we've got group. We've got group D. We've got Group D, we've got England, Croatia, Czech Republic, and Scotland. Now, there's a lot of good players in this group. A lot of them English, by the way, and Croatian. But that's not the point. The point overall is that we have, well, <laughs> a bit of a toss-up. We've got the World Cup semi-final matchup, rematch, should I say, from England versus Croatia. And, I mean, I don't think Croatia are going to be strong enough. I think England are going to take position one. I think Croatia position two. And then, unlike most of the groups, I feel like this one is one of the more decisive groups where you can sort of pick everyone's positions. Czech Republic position three, and Scotland in last. 
Scotland might pull off an upset or two. They're going to need to if they want to progress. But for now, I don't think they're going to make it through. Unlucky. Then this one. Now, Spa now we've got Spain. Switzerland boosted by the return of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We've got Poland and their gold machine, Robert Lewandowski. And we've got whoever this team is, I don't actually know. They're not going to be position number one. They're probably going to be position four, Slovakia. So where did they even play in the groups? Who did they come up against? Who do they have in their team? Like, Let's find out. Who do they have in their... Marek Hamšík is their captain. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Like, where are, where's the scoring? Like, I'm trying to see if I know any of these names. Dubravka, Rodak, Pekarik, okay, Skriniar. I mean, I still think they'll finish last, unfortunately. Because the overall quality of, say, a Switzerland, Sweden, who I'm going to predict to finish third in the group, is just not good enough. And then Poland... Again, they're probably going to finish second. Lewandowski will fire them into second. And Spain will finish first in the group. They've got that boosted defense with Imeric Laporte. And that is that. Now, this one is the group of death. <laughs> it's the group of death for Hungary, that is. Not the group of death for many others. And, well, we've got a three-way between... We've got, the Euro we've got the matchup from the final of the 2016 Euros between Portugal and France, when Ed Erd scored the winner. We've got Germany, and we've got Hungary. I mean, France's depth is probably the best in the world, if not the, definitely the best in Europe, if not the best in the world. They're going to finish position one. It's going to come down to Portugal versus Germany, I reckon. Whoever beats, wins that game, will get the spot, but Portugal... Ronaldo, you just can't ever rule them out. They're going to take position two. Germany are going to take position three, but they're also going to get into the playoff. I mean, not the playoff, the third place teams that qualify. And Hungary will unfortunately finish in last. It's nothing against Hungary. If you're Hungarian, I apologize. It's just that your team got a little bit unlucky. And then we're going to predict the four teams to qualify. So Germany in position one. Who do, who do all these teams have? Eh, see, it's tough, because a lot of them are in groups. Like, we're going to pick Ukraine. Ukraine are a bit of a shock. And then we'll pick Russia. Like, there's going to be some surprises. And we'll pick Switzerland, too. Just because, I mean, Czech Republic and Sweden missing out. I know it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Then we've got Belgium versus Switzerland in the quarters. Or the round of 16, sorry. We've got Italy versus Austria, France versus Ukraine, Croatia versus Poland, Spain versus Russia, England versus Portugal. That's huge. That is a huge matchup. Netherlands versus Germany, another huge matchup. And Turkey versus Denmark. Hmm. So we'll start with the easy ones. We'll go here. We've got what? We've got. Belgium beating Switzerland, Italy beating Austria, France beating Ukraine pretty decisively. Then it's gonna. This is one of the. This is one of the different ones. This is one where it depends on the day that a, say for example, a Modric or a Lewandowski has. We're gonna give Croatia the edge. We're gonna give them the edge. It's gonna be tight. We're going to give Croatia the edge. It'll be a rematch of the World Cup final. Then Spain are going to avenge their loss in, I believe, the round of 16 against Russia. Where they lost on pens. And, well, this is undoubtedly the biggest game of the tournament to date. If it happens, obviously my predictions aren't final. This is a... You can just search Euro 2020 predictor and do this yourself and send them in or send screenshots on Twitter, etc. It's all there. But 
We're going to give Portugal the edge now. There's a lot of reasons why I think Portugal will win. Number one factor being Ronaldo. And Ronaldo is just that big game player that England don't seem to have on a regular basis. Because a lot of the Portuguese players have big game experience, have that big club experience. England have... Yes, a lot of them play each other week in, week out. That's all well and good. But not many of them win lots of things and win the big games and stuff like that. So they're not used to the success, and that's probably going to be the difference. And then this one, again. <laughs> again, we've got the top of one group and third place from a playoff. Or the fourth, three of best teams. So we've got Germany versus the Netherlands. Now, Van Dijk is not playing in the Euros. So this will be... I mean, the Netherlands are still quite strong, aren't they? But I'm going to give Germany the edge. I'm going to give Germany the edge. It's like you want to give the Netherlands a chance, but the firepower up top just doesn't scream, oh, I'm going to give you a chance. Like, maybe they'll prove me wrong. And then this one is another tough one. We're going to give a hmm, bit of a tough one indeed. But we're gonna give. We're gonna give. If I reckon this would go to pens, and then Schmeichel's got that pen shootout experience. So Germany versus Denmark. Then we've got some big matchups ahead. We've got Belgium versus Italy, which. I mean. Let's be honest here. De Bruyne should be back in time for this matchup, if he misses any to begin with. But I'm sure he'll be fine. Italy have a good team, but they're also they're also aging. Like these are two sides that you feel like if they don't win here, if they don't win this tournament, they're probably. I mean, Belgium are a bit younger. And the youth is what will put... Like, I don't know that they have the youngest players. Like, Tillemans, obviously. They have a couple of other good lads. Your Bruyne, your Courtois, your Hazard. Hopefully you pull through. Both the Hazards, I think, are in the squad. Thorgan and Eden. Everything about Belgium just says that they will progress to the semis. And try and make up for what they did in the quarters in Euro 2016 when they lost to Wales. France and Croatia, again, it comes down to the depth of the French squad, I'm sure. Oh, and I've just done that without trying, of course. No? Fuck. <laughs> oh, well. I'll fix that in a second. Don't worry about that. I've accidentally done that. Accidentally. Yeah. So, yeah. France, that depth is going to be key. They're probably going to rotate their players throughout the tournament just to keep the legs fresh and whatnot. France's depth is going to be the tell all difference and it's going to give them the opportunity to progress. Now we've got the big rivalry game, Spain and Portugal. Now this might be Portugal's biggest test. Not that England aren't a big test, but Spain have been on the rise ever since they came with Luis Enrique. No Ramos, but they brought in Laporte, who is pretty big. But, and you hope that Ronaldo turns up and he provides a performance worthy of that, of the big stage. Who do you give it to? Do you give it to Portugal to go back to the semis? It's so, like, again, they've got such big experience. But Spain have such, like, they have some surprise packets. They have Adama Traore who I did not just mention because I'm a Wolves fan. But they have some big surprise packages, and they have the big, like, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of these players would have watched the golden generation for Spain around, what, 2008 to 2012, or 2013, whatever you want to call it. It's so tough, and I know some people are going to be so mad, they're going to be like, why didn't you pick Portugal, or why didn't you pick Spain? Because it's so difficult, and that's the whole point of this, is it's meant to be difficult. If it's so easy, and you just predict the easiest run for a team, it's not fun. We're going to pick Portugal, because 
De Gea is going to be not in the best of form. He is probably still recovering from that Europa League final miss in the penalty spot. And then this one is one of the more straightforward ones. I mean, Denmark could make it interesting because they did take Croatia to penalties in Russia 2018. They did draw with France nil-nil at Russia 2018. But I think Germany will come out on top. Again, that experience factor that Denmark don't really have. Then we've got two big games, Belgium versus France and Portugal versus Germany. Two massive games. Belgium versus France. Like, you've got so many, like, it's so hard to tell, realistically, because France have so much depth, and they're going to have so many good players, like your Mbappe. Mbappe, Benzema, Kante. Kante's in the form of his life. So many good players. I'm sure you can name far more, but they have so many impact players. Whether it be off the bench, starting, defense, midfield, attack, even in goal, they have decent players that have proven credentials within whether it be their respective leagues or internationally, or even continentally as well. But it's just so difficult... And as I say, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to predict this entirely. We're going to get put France to the final. France going back to back. And then, well, this one, again, it's going to depend on Portugal. Like, this is ideally, in an ideal world where... You know, everyone is at their best, everyone's 100%, but reality is, is Portugal seem to have the big players for the big moments. Like, Germany barely use any actual strikers, and their number one striker, admittedly, and if you're a Chelsea fan, you'll know this, or if you're a Germany fan and you watch enough of him, you'll know this, Timo Werner is not the best striker. Like, he might need a bit of time, and maybe, maybe playing for Germany is a little different. But I don't know if the motivation to send Jürgen Löw away with a last trophy before he goes away and he steps away and he lets Hansi Flick go into the job. I think Portugal will win and then we're going to go back to where we were. The Europa we're going to go back to the Euro 2016 final. The Euro 2016 final. Final, we've got the reigning European champions against the reigning world champions. Like, there's a lot of things that you can say about these teams. But France, basic, I reckon, and this is personal, France outmatch Portugal in pretty much all aspects. In terms of defence, in terms of defensive midfield in terms of wingers, because yes, I don't classify Ronaldo as a winger, especially not for Portugal, I classify him as a striker. I classify Mbappe as a striker as well, because it's not based on club level on the, on the European stage. But, yes. Yes, it's going to be tough. I think the... Well, first of all, you've got the likes of Kante, who's in the form of his life. The form of his life. And then you've got... You've got Bruno. You've got all these big players. All these big games. What a decision. I know someone's going to miss out. Someone's going to get hurt. We're going to pick France to win it. France are your European champions, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I will be, since I got up to sport, I'll be doing a lot of watch-alongs for the Euros. I will try to anyway. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to actually stream the games, but I'll be able to stream my reactions live on Optus Sport. 
well, on Twitch, not up to sport, but I reckon France, I, I think it's not a sure-gone conclusion, but let's be honest with ourselves here. It's going to be the easiest decision to make. So, yeah, that's the prediction for this video. We'll be back with more YouTube content soon. I hope to get this up in the next few days, but for now, enjoy and goodbye.